Hi everyone, as you can tell, I am not in class today, so I wanted to give you a brief intro for our energy slash work packet, since we didn't get a chance to start it yesterday. So hopefully you guys can, uh, for the first half of class, look at the um, video about the test, the model choice questions, um, and that should take you a while to look at, and then get started on this part. So uh, this kind of goes along with the reading from last night, where <clears throat> hopefully you saw that energy cannot be uh, created or destroyed. There's one of those laws of conservation of energy, just like mass um, or matter. So when we define our system, whatever the energy is, that total amount needs to stay, be the same, but it can change from form to form. And we need to look at you know boundaries of our system. So if we do something like, all right, you wake up in the morning and you start off with energy level zero. Um, technically, if you had energy level zero, you would die, right? So if for that day, um, you didn't eat anything, you're not taking in any energy, and you're going to, you know, realistically be negative energy for the day. You'll lose weight um, or burn calories. Um, it doesn't always work that way because the way the body works when you start to eat things, you start to you know conserve things and go into starvation mode, but we can't necessarily look at that. Um, but we can look at like you know how your body works. Like your body stores energy as fat. So if you don't eat for some length of time and you only drink water, your body will start to eat itself. It will use that energy. Um, but if we took make it a little bit more clear cut where our system is and get the bio and the chem out of our scenario which will continue uh, next week. Um, just kind of let you know where you know the, the boundaries are between biochem and physics. So here we have a wind-up tour. So what we're going to imagine is we wind this toy up, or this can be like those cars that you pull back and let go when they go you know, on their own. <clears throat> um, we're going to create some pie charts. This, and we say pie chart because we're looking at a total energy. So the total amount, the 100% of the energy we have in the beginning, needs to be the 100% of the energy we have in the end. In the end, And it's just going to change form. Um, so imagine this little toy at rest, and you wind it up, the things you got at, you know, like McDonald's and Taco Bell and whatever fast food places are out there, and you're like, you know, Happy Meals. Um, where does the energy come for you to wind it up? Well, for you, it comes from that chemical potential stored energy, whatever you ate, right? All those processes. So we're looking at once this object that is not living, it has to have what's called mechanical energy. So in physics, we're only concerned with mechanical energy, which is only um, kinetic energy, gravitational potential energy, and then what we'll look at as elastic potential energy. And that's what we're talking about is winding this thing up, this, this elastic, stretchy property um, of things. So what I'm going to ask you is, um, for each scenario, draw a pie chart for the beginning, the middle, and the end of the scenario. Um, some things to consider, like they mentioned, where does the energy come from? Like as far as source, what does the energy do and where does the energy go? So if we look at this wind up toy fully wound up and it's at rest, it's got all what we can call potential energy. We're not gonna necessarily call it elastic potential energy. Um, there's a bunch of types of potential energy. There's chemical potentially or chemical potential energy, elastic potential energy, gravitational potential energy. What does potential mean? It means the ability to. So if somebody says you have the ability to be a great lacrosse player, a soccer star, um, a great surgeon, that, that means like if you take the right steps, that can be your future, but it's not necessarily what's going to go um, into effect. So as far as energy goes, potential means stored. Um, so this is all going to be potential energy stored in uh, we can we can even say elastic potential energy. So let's let's reverse that. Any kind of thing stretchy or you wind up, so that's energy elastic or eel. So it's at rest. So beginning, middle, no matter what you do, that's the energy that it has. 
where that energy come from came from you. You did work on the system. We'll talk about work a little bit later. Two, the wind up toy is wound up and moving across the ground. So these vectors down here, these are velocity vectors. So we know that it's going faster and faster and faster. It's accelerating. Um, so in the beginning, it's wound up. It has mostly elastic potential energy. In the middle, um, it's going to lose some of that energy. and It's going to transfer it to kinetic energy because it's moving. So the faster you go, kinetic means motion, the more kinetic energy you have. The exact percentages we're not really worried about at this point. Um, towards the end when it would be going the fastest, we could say all kinetic. But we're forgetting about something. Humans problem to existence, you know, in physics. Anytime things are moving, you also have friction. Friction generates thermal energy. So going back a few stages here. So yeah, you would have probably mostly um, kinetic, mostly elastic potential, probably still stored up in the winding, but you're going to have a little bit of thermal. So think about it if you're cold, you're standing outside for the bus stop or outside, or you're just cold in your room. You move your hands back and forth together. The longer you move them, the faster you move them, the more heat is generated. And that heat does not necessarily go away. In real life, it does go away to get spread out throughout your hands, your arms, to the air. But what if that heat was contained? Your hands would get hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter. And we see that with a lot of you know, you know, car engines. You need antifreeze and coolant. Um, it's kind of like the same liquid, but it prevents your engine from overheating to transfer that energy that heat. So towards the end, let's say, you know, this thing is not wound up anymore. It's moving as fast as it can. And it's going to have mostly kinetic energy because it's moving and thermal. Again, percentages we're not really worried about at this point. Number three, we could see that this guy is going up in the beginning. Let's call it half elastic, but notice, look at these vectors. These are velocity vectors or motion maps, something we didn't necessarily touch on. Now we can start to look at them. It's going the same velocity at all cases. So in each case going up our hill, the kinetic energy should be the same. So I'm just going to make it a quarter because that's just easy to, easy to measure. Kinetic, so let's say... The other amount in the beginning, it's moving, we'll call it thermal. So as it's going up and up and up, it's you know wind up energy, it's elastic potential is gonna decrease. Um, so let's go decrease in elastic. Thermal is gonna build. It's gonna get hotter and hotter and hotter. But keep in mind, kinetic is staying the same. Well, what else is also increasing? It's getting higher up in the air. So as you get higher up, not in the air, but a greater height, if you remember the videos with Billy, Bob, and Bo, um, we're increasing our gravitational potential energy. So we need to increase both thermal. So here's my thermal sliver that's kind of out of whack here. And E subscript G for gravitational. Maybe in the end, we're maxing out at, uh, we gotta keep our same kinetic because we're going the same speed. Our thermal grows. And again, these are all relative. We don't know exact values. And then our gravitational grow. So that's what I'd like you to do uh, for the rest of classes. Go through each scenario. And we're only looking at those, those three types of energies in worksheet um, 1A, elastic, kinetic, thermal, gravitational. Kinetic having to do with how fast you're going. 
elastic. You know, we it started with all elastic. We wound it up. It was some kind of stretchy kind of scenario or gearing, probably a spring in there. Um, so elastic, kinetic, gravitational, and thermal. Then when you get to worksheet 1B, again, very similar scenarios. Um, I'm going to ask you to do that um, yet again. But I believe if I, I just want to look in another place. Uh, those are all the same kinds of energy. So um, just worksheets 1A and 1B. And then any questions we can address next week. So have a good rest of your week.